Hello everyone and welcome to my first video in my beginner's guide to Unraid. Just as a disclaimer before we get started, I'm not an Unraid expert, I do not pretend to be one, but for this series I believe that's actually going to be more beneficial as I'll be able to include steps that others might miss because they are more experienced and don't think things are worth mentioning. So yes, my goal is to be very step by step and beginner friendly. Now if you're already an expert with Unraid, this might not be the video series for you, However, you're absolutely more than welcome to stick around and help out other new people and myself if I miss something. Now, though I'm not an expert, I have been using Unraid for quite a few years. Now, to get started on your Unraid journey, you're going to need three things. The first is a USB drive. We install the operating system onto the USB drive and boot off that. Any high quality USB drive from a reputable brand such as Samsung. The second thing you're going to need is a PC with a network port. It'll also need to have a USB port, but the cool thing about Unraid is you can use almost any system to run it. So for those who are wanting to start their Unraid journey on a budget, you're in luck. Now if you don't have an old PC lying around, Facebook and eBay are awesome places to get a bargain. A good option is an old Dell Optiplex. There's always an abundance of them on Facebook and eBay that you can snatch up for a steal. The third thing we're going to need is an Unraid license. Just to quickly go over pricing for Unraid. They offer multiple different licensing, such as the cheap $49 starter license or the complete lifetime license. Now you do not need to buy any of these to start out, and that's how I would suggest that you start. If you decide that you like Unraid and you wish to continue using it, you can decide on which one to buy. If we go back to the home screen, to avoid paying for an Unraid license at the start, you can click free trial and then download your USB creator. As you can see here, once Unraid is installed, you get a free 30 day trial, which should give you plenty of time to decide whether you like Unraid or not. If you're a bit slow to get stuck into your Unraid system and the 30 days trial ends before you can decide, feel free to contact Unraid and they may give you a 30 day extension. Now I don't promise anything, I know they have done it in the past, things may have changed. Once you're ready to get started, download the creator tool for your operating system. And once that's finished, you can run it. Install, and this will just extract the files to run. And then you can run the USB creator tool. Extremely straightforward. The new Unraid creator tool layout is amazing. All you need to do is choose the Unraid version you wish to install. Now, as of the time of recording, Unraid 6.12.11 is the most recent stable version, hence why it says it recommended next to it. You can then download the previous few versions or choose the beta versions. Now, because we are on the cusp of Unraid 7 and I want these videos to remain relevant for as long as possible so that you guys can get the benefits, I will be using Unraid 7 beta 2 because it won't be very long before Unraid 7 is released as the stable version. But in your case I would recommend choosing the recommended version whenever you might be creating your USB tool. Then choose your USB device. The recommendation is 32 gigs or below for a flash drive, although I have a Samsung 64 gigabyte. I was unable to get a 32 so we're going to use a 64 and hope that it works as you can see here i have a guid of the usb and your unraid license is tied to that then click next on the screen i would recommend leaving all the settings as they are by default 
you are able to change the name of your server when we get into the Unraid GUI, but you're welcome to do it now if you would like. And the DHCP will automatically give your system an IP address. Now, if you don't have a screen for your Unraid system, so you can't view what's being displayed on it, that's not an issue. You would just need a, set, a static IP. Based on your other devices, this IP address will be different for depending on where you are in the world. Uh, a default one in my area of the world is 192.168.1. something. So you would need to pick a number that is not being used. You can leave the, the net mask the same. And the gateway would be 192.168.1.1. DNS server, you could leave as 8.8.8.8, .8 which is a Google DNS server. This is the main one that you need here, as this will always be the IP address for your Unraid, if you wish to set it this way. So think of a number between 1 and 250. Well, it won't be 1, it'll be between 2 and 254. That is not being used. Numbers like 123 or 111 or 321 are quite good. Wouldn't necessarily say recommended, but quite good as you'll easily remember it. If you do have a screen up for your Unraid server, or can have a screen for your Unraid server while you initially set it up, DHCP is going to take all the stress out of it. And then you can set a static one afterwards. So I would recommend setting it like this, unless you don't have a screen up for your Unraid server and you need to know what the IP will be from the first minute. Once you're happy with your settings, click continue and you'll get the warning that everything on your flash drive will be erased. Click yes and it'll begin to format. Downloading the Unraid version and setting it up ready for you to use. So while we wait for Unraid to finish, this will be the end of video. Next video will begin the Unraid build and setup. Just be aware that the video you're seeing is sped up, so don't be alarmed if yours takes a lot longer than what you're seeing in the video. Hope this was helpful for our first video, and I'll see you in the next one.